So, um, oh, I did want to share with you my cards today. Um, I'm working with the Halloween Tarot deck. This is probably my very favorite deck. Close to the Rider weight, uh, but it's got its own beautiful imagery, and it's just fantastic. You'll see why I love it so much as the reading goes on, I'm sure. Um, oh, and um, being a, a general reading, this may not apply to everyone, so take it as it resonates and, you know, all of that. Um, <clears throat> this is the card from the bottom of the deck, and it is the Ten of Imps. Uh, Ten of Imps has to do with responsibility. Um, you're feeling your burdens, right? Um, you look at your hump back here. You can't even walk up straight. You've got so much heavy uh, burden going on. Um, so <clears throat> be careful as you're dealing with your responsibilities that you either don't leave things out or don't focus on things if you do miss them. You know, this is a good time to be writing your lists, um, kind of tidying up all of that so that you have less stress. Sometimes when we overlook things, maybe we're late on a bill or some other thing, uh, that's when we really start feeling our stress to the nth degree. Um, so we'll see how that, that plays out. But um, anyway, wanted to point that one out. Um, you guys have been working hard, a lot of you. Um, now, <clears throat> this is the card that covers you. This is your basic energy that's going on right now. That's the Ace of Bats. And this is about truth and awareness and awakening, right? This is the beginning of an intellectual idea. Um, this is kind of, for some of you, it may be about getting an idea um, that you can use in business, uh, moving that forward. Maybe some kind of truth comes in, something that you didn't know that you now know um, that's going to help you make decisions. And given that the influence that's coming in here is the sun card, which is the happiest card in the deck, it's a wonderful, wonderful card. Um, whatever this truth is that came in for you is illuminating something for you. It's making you feel very, very happy about it, right? For some of you, it could be the announcement of a pregnancy, a child on the way. It could be that you got the business offer or the job offer that you were looking for. Maybe your business is taking off. Maybe you're falling in love. Um, that person cares too. Um, there are some romantic elements with some of the other cards, so we'll get into that in a little minute. Um, the Sun card could be the Leo card. Um, sometimes that represents Leo. Sun is the planetary ruler of Leo, um, so it could possibly be that. Crowning you or what's on your mind is the two of bats in the reverse. In the upright, this person feels blinded to making a decision. They've got this choice to make and they're not really sure what to do about it. But they also feel like they're limited in their information. They may not know what's going on and it's kind of stressing them out. Uh, <clears throat> in the reverse, this is about making a decision making a decision. And for so many of you, that's exactly what you want to do when you feel conflicted. Um, Geminis are awesome. I love Geminis. Um, but they do, I shouldn't say but, you know, I love Geminis and they have a tendency to want two th opposite things at the same time. And that just doesn't often work at this level of existence, right? There are certain things that just, um, you can't be a little pregnant. Can I say that? Um, you either are or you aren't, you know, um, you know, yeah, whatever. I'm going to leave that. So this is the desire to make a decision. That's what the two of bats means in this, um, in that position. This is what's on your mind. You want to make a choice on something. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, post nasal drip, whatever. What can you do? Night of ghosts. Um, this is the basis of the matter. It's some kind of a love message coming in. It's a love letter. You love this, right? Somebody is is offering you something tangible. This parchment paper, there's something written on that. It's positive. It's love. Uh, this is the suit of water, spirituality, emotions, right? Um, and this is somebody marching forward. Um, there is forward movement in that. Is It's an expression of love that's coming in, either from you or or to you by someone else. Um a message of true love. So uh, that's a really happy thing there. Um, three of imps. Uh, this is behind you in your recent past, or it's an influence that's moving into the past. This card is about waiting for your ships to come in. But one thing that I'm noting too, and um, uh, I'll bring this up again a little bit later, but <clears throat> you've got two people here, both of whom are carrying or holding up wands, torches, essentially. Then you have this other one who's carrying or holding up a wand that's got leaves on the top. Um, 
three people here. Well, it's three imps, so we're going to see that. Um, but there, it's kind of like a doorway, right? Someone is waiting for their ships to come in. They're waiting for that. Um, we see the, I'll bring it in here. We see the card representing you as the three of bats, which can indicate a third party situation or some kind of heartache or, or something like that. And it, it makes me think these cards together in a sense. And I question about your choice. I feel some of you may be trying to make a choice between two different people even and what to do about a situation feeling stuck, right? Because you got two two individuals up here, and then here's a third, and you got two here that seem to be twins, basically, and you've got sorry, I forgot twins, Gemini, whatever, and then you've got this this person over here coming in with their unique brand. Um, so there could be some of that that's going on for some of you. Could be some of that. <clears throat> Now, uh, this is in the future. So we move from the three of imps energy to the sun and the ace of bats. This, this information, this knowledge, something that's come in or been communicated or something sparking you up. Um, and, and this positive solar energy coming in. And here's the queen of bats. And she is the queen of swords in other decks. She's the Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Could be you or could be a fellow Gemini or a Libra or Aquarius, or somebody who's in that kind of energy, somebody who's intellectual, um, somebody who's um, discerning, um, someone who she can tend to be a little bit guarded, perchance, but, um, you know, she's somebody who's going to be fair and truthful and, and logical and all of that. Um, sometimes she can be you know, very decisive. She knows when it's time to cut something out that's not for her benefit. Um, at other times, um, you know, she knows when to hold on to what, you know, at the same time. So again, this could be about that, that desire to make a decision becoming manifest in here where you use, you know, you've got that sort of truth and you're trying to discern what is, what is necessary. Note that there are two deaths head moths here too. So sometimes it can indicate that she's ready to make that kind of change. She's ready to uh, let go of something in one area of her life to move on to something else. Right. But she's, she's interested in the bat. She's not, you know, luring him in to kill him or anything like that. So she's, um, you know, she wants to do the right thing. And certainly there's that element of truth in that. But <clears throat> there's also something that, that came in some knowledge or some truth. And she's trying to make sense of what that means and make some sort of decision about it. But whatever this information was, it came in, it made her very, very happy. And when I go again back to this, this thing at the bottom of the deck with the responsibility and just kind of feeling this, this, ultimate sense of responsibility. You know, the card right below that is this Ace of Imps. And the Ace of Imps, in the upright, this is about passion. This would be the Ace of Wands. What a phallic symbol. It's about passion, you know, sexual passion or passion for life. Um, the beginning of something, some new passionate movement that you can put into practice or, or make manifest. In the reverse, this could be the opposite of that. It could be maybe stagnation or stalemate in there. Maybe you're having so much responsibility that there's some kind of heartache or loss or, or what have you going on at home that you're having a difficulty in, in reconnecting um, with that passion uh, for some of you. <clears throat> now, um, I don't want to forget anything. I'm sort of floating around following the story here. Um, in your environment, we have the Ace of Pumpkins. And the Ace of Pumpkins is about um, new beginnings, something that's made material, something that's manifest, um, the beginning of a new business, uh, the be beginning of new wealth, new health, uh, new opportunity. Again, something happened here. We have all these different beginnings, including the Ace of Imps over there that I just brought in. Something's missing from your present situation that even though you're not in a bad situation at all, there's something that you are craving. Something's not being met. And some truth or some awakening, or you finally were able to put your finger on it. Haha, ha, there's a finger right there. You were finally able to put your finger on it and recognize what this is. And it's, do I want to awaken this, whatever this is? Do I, how do I want to make use of this information? Somebody told you something and it was most likely a love message. The truth is out. They love you. He or she loves you, and you're finally catching on. <laughs> I 
I have to laugh at myself sometimes. I'm nuts. Don't worry about it. Uh, nobody will get hurt. Um, anyway, hopes and fears card. We have the justice in reverse. Now, justice could be your Libra, right? Um, possibly involvement. Maybe you're involved with a Libra, something like that. Maybe the Libra is stepping out. Maybe that's what this third party situation is. Maybe that's the reason for the lack of passion in the relationship. They've been taking it someplace else. Maybe you've been too busy at work. Uh, something like that. But because this is in the position of fear, it could be that you are afraid of being misjudged or being called to justice if you step out or do something wrong. That would be people in a current relationship. If you're single, it could be that you're going to make the misstep and that you're going to get involved with somebody that you don't want to be involved with. You've been trying to work hard. You know, you've got a lot of responsibilities, a lot of burdens going on in your plate. Maybe you don't want to make the wrong decision. Maybe if you're thinking about getting together with a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius person, you're afraid that he or she may not have your best interests. And you're, you're afraid of that for some reason. Love can be very, very scary. You know, no lie. It can be very scary because we have to let go with people or it's just not going to work out anyway. You can't hold your heart in a tiny little cage and think that, you know, people aren't going to stick around for that. People want to, they want to feel something. They want to be there. They don't just want to go in the, the autopilot. They don't want that. It's, it's not a long-term strategy in, in loving re relationship. So the hangman, this is the final outcome card for that. It kind of matches the sentiment of the two of bats, except on a spiritual level. What do I do here? Now, this is not a miserable, um, I guess that's a scarecrow. This is not a miserable scarecrow hanging here. The scarecrow put himself into that. And the reason was to get a change in perspective, a new view. He's not trying to trip on a headbrush. That might be fun. I don't know. Maybe not for me. That, I hear a headache. But then again, it might realign my spine. Who can say? I, I'm babbling, whatever. But you get you get the idea. Here's this hangman sitting there trying to get a new perspective, insight, awareness, to be able to make this decision that he or she is trying to make. Clarity. Clarity. If we don't spend the time in the meditation, how in the hell are we ever supposed to know what we're doing anyway? How are we supposed to know that? It's just not going to make any sense. In order to get to the place of forward movement, sometimes we have to stand still. And sometimes the fastest movement we can make is when we stand still and allow ourselves to go within and determine what is that that I need to do. Because then and only then will we be able to make a decision. What are we going to chop out? What are we going to invite in? But if you're inviting somebody in in a loving way, by God, put down that freaking sword. <laughs> put down that sword. Oh, we had a jumper. I love jumpers. I Somehow I feel like there's a little spirit standing right by my elbow that's popping them right out of the deck as I'm throwing them. All right. <clears throat> Impossible things. Oh, my God. This sounds so funny. Working through disbelief, imaginative leaps... And fresh perspective. Oh, my ever-loving God. Thank you. Thank you. Fresh perspective. Isn't that what we said? The hangman is hanging upside down to change perspective. <clears throat> There's no use in trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was your age, I always did it for a half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Alice is correct. It is indeed difficult to believe in impossible things. However, it is the Queen's viewpoint that resonates most with Alice. And when you receive this card with you too, you are being asked to believe in something that seems impossible at present. This could be a miracle or something that seems too good to be true. It also talks of belief as a matter of discipline and practice. As the Queen says, she practices believing in impossible things. What if you were to practice believing in the impossible? If you were to spend half an hour each day meditating on a miracle, changing your thoughts, or focusing on creating an amazing life, you would slowly but surely expand your limits of possibility. 
If you devoted a half hour each day to creative, creating wonderful changes within your life, what would you achieve? Financial breakthroughs, relationship bliss, physical healing? Devote yourself to something you wish to improve. When we do this, then just like the queen, we too start to believe in impossible things because dedication steadily brings the impossible closer. In divination, this card represents a struggle to accept what seems unlikely. Devote regular time to improving a situation, becoming better at something you care about, or changing something for the better. Meditate on a miracle and believe in impossible things.